Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to discuss about Databricks CLI. Now CLI stands for command line interface and we can go ahead and use Databricks commands in order to work with Databricks services. Now before we can begin with that it is important to note that the CLI is a wrapper of Databricks REST API and it allows you to work with both Databricks account and Databricks workspaces. In today's video we are going to install Databricks CLI and we are going to authenticate Databricks CLI in order to work with it. Databricks provide different ways to authenticate for Databricks CLI. If you click on the link which says authentication for Databricks CLI, we land onto this page. In this page, if I scroll down, there are multiple ways in which we can authenticate. And the two important ones are M2M authentication and U2M authentication. And we are going to look both of them today. And we are going to run some commands from our command line interface in order to see how we can interact with Databricks services. Now, before we can start with this, if you have not seen our previous videos, I would recommend you to go back and watch our playlist from the beginning. So, without any further delay, let's begin. First step to start with Databricks CLI is to install Databricks CLI. Now, I am using a Windows laptop. If you are using Mac or Linux, the steps would be a little bit different for you. But you can follow the documentation that has been provided by Databricks in order to install Databricks CLI. Now, how to find that documentation? In the same page, just scroll down to bottom and you can find install or update Databricks CLI. Just click on this. Once you are on this page which says install or update Databricks CLI, just scroll down and search for the operating system that you are going to use. For me, it is Windows, so I'm going to use Winget. But if you are using Linux or Mac OS, you can just go ahead and use Homebrew, Curl or Source Builds. This document provides elaborated steps in order to install CLI. So that should not be a problem for us. Now, since I'm using Windows, I'm going to use Winget. So I'll just click on Winget now and it gives me two of the steps that I need to run in my command prompt. So let me just quickly open command prompt first. Now my command prompt is open. I'll quickly go back to the documentation and I'll copy the first line which says Winget search Databricks. I'll just copy it and I'll paste it in my command prompt and hit enter. Awesome, it gives me two options and I'm going to use the first one which says Databricks CLI. So I'll quickly just copy the ID for it which is Databricks.Databricks CLI. Even you can go back to the Databricks documentation and you can copy the second line which says Winget install Databricks.Databricks CLI. Come back and paste it in the command prompt and hit enter. It will take a few minutes to install. Awesome, it says successfully installed. Now, in order to verify, just type data bricks minus small v, okay, and hit enter. As soon as you do that, it would give you the Databricks CLI version for me, which is 0 0.262. Now, once you see this message, it means your Databricks is installed successfully. For Linux and Mac OS, your steps would be different till you install Databricks. Once you install Databricks, you can run the same command, which is Databricks minus v, which would give you the version of the Databricks CLI. And once you get that, it means your installation is also successful. Great. Now that our Databricks CLI is installed successfully, let's see how we can authenticate our Databricks CLI in order to work with Databricks services. Great. Now that our Databricks CLI installation is complete, let's authenticate our Databricks CLI. Today, we are going to see two ways. One is U2M, which stands for user to machine. And the other one is M2M, which stands for machine to machine. In U2M, we are going to use our own user credentials in order to authenticate. In M2M, we are going to use a service principle, which we have already created in our previous video in order to authenticate. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll first click on user to machine. Now, this document provides all of the elaborated steps that you can follow in order to authenticate your Databricks CLI. And I'm going to show you that using my command prompt. So let me just quickly open my command prompt. And now, in order to authenticate using U2M method, what we need to do is we just need to type Databricks auth and then we need to type login. Okay. And then we need to provide our workspace URL as a parameter with a flag called host. So, what I'll do is I'll just type minus minus host. And now we need to provide our Databricks workspace URL. So, I'll quickly go back to my Databricks workspace and I'll copy the URL till.net. Okay. I'll copy this from here. I'll open my command prompt and I'll paste it here, okay? And I'll hit enter. Now it asks me to provide a profile name. By default, you can see it has already provided a profile name. But I'll remove it from here and I'll just type the profile name as SK, okay? And I'll hit enter. It will quickly open a new tab for authentication. Now, since I'm already authenticated in my Cognito window, what I'll do is I'll just copy this URL from here. I'll go back to my Cognito window 
and I'll paste it here and I'll hit enter. Okay, and I'll click on continue with Microsoft Enter ID. And this will authenticate. Now, let me open my command prompt. And now you can see profile SK was successfully set. It means our authentication is complete. Now, in order to see if your profile is successfully saved, what you can do is you can just type data bricks auth profiles. Okay, and hit enter. Now it will give you all the authentication profiles that are stored. Okay, and these profiles are stored in a file called dot databricks CFG, which stands for configuration. And we can open that file in order to see it as well. Okay. Now in Windows, we are going to use Notepad in order to open that file. But if you are in Linux or Mac, you can just go ahead and do nano. Okay. So let me just type notepad.exe and then I'll copy the path and I'll paste it here and I'll put a slash and then I'll type dot and then I'll type data bricks CFG. Okay. Within this file, all of your profiles are saved. Okay. So let me just hit enter. It will open me a notepad and you can see the profile configured here. Okay. So if you have more than one profiles, you can go ahead and see all of them here in this file. Now I'll not close this notepad because we are going to use it for M2M authentication. So I'll just let it be. So now you know where all of your profiles are saved. This is saved within this file, which is .databricks CFG. Okay. So now that our profile is configured, let's go ahead and run some CLI commands. So the first command that I will run is to list all of the catalogs that we have. Okay. So in order to do that, I'll just type data bricks and then I'll use a command called catalogs and then I'll type list. Okay. And I'll hit enter. Awesome. Now you can see all of the catalogs are listed here. Now, how did I know that I have to type catalogs and list? So what I'll do is let me show you. So I'll just clear my screen and I'll type data bricks and then I'll use minus minus. Okay, and this minus minus help you can go ahead and use throughout your Databricks CLI in order to see the documentation or how you can use that command. So let me just hit enter. And now you can see there are a lot of options available with Databricks CLI and we have just used catalogs. So in order to see what more options is available within catalogs, let me just clear my screen and I'll type Databricks catalogs and I'll type help. Okay, and I'll hit enter. Now you can see we can create, delete, we can get we can list and even we can update catalogs using Databricks CLI. So now let's go ahead and create a new schema using CLI. So what I'll do is I'll just clear the screen first and then I'll type Databricks schemas and then I'll type help. Okay. Now it will give me all of the options. Now you can see we can use create command in order to create schema. So what I'll do is I'll next type schemas and then I'll type create okay and we'll see what all options we need to pass in order to create so i'll just hit enter now you can see we just need to pass the name of the schema and the catalog name okay so to create schema i'll just type data bricks schemas and then i'll type create because we want to create schema and then the name of the schema so i'll just give a name called it schema cli okay so this would be the name of our schema and then the catalog name so we have a catalog called dev here and we are going to use that catalog okay now i'll pass the name of the profile that we are going to use in order to run this command in our previous command we didn't mention any profile and since we had only one profile databricks used that profile but there can be cases where you can have more than one profile okay and in those cases you need to pass in the profile name so it is a good practice to always pass the profile name along with your databricks cli command so i'll use minus p as the flag in order to pass my profile name the name of our profile that we configured was sk so i'll just hit enter so let's quickly go back to our workspace and what I'll do is I'll quickly go to catalogs and then I'll expand dev and now you can see schema CLI here. Okay. So now you know how you can go ahead and use CLI commands in order to work with different services in your Databricks. Now let's configure the other way of authentication, which is M2M, which stands for machine to machine. And we are going to use a service principle for this. And this is the authentication method that we are going to use with our Azure DevOps pipeline as well. So in order to configure M2M authentication, we need a service principle. So we have already created a service principle in our previous video. If you have not seen that video, go ahead and watch that video first. Now let's quickly go back to our account console. So I'm in my account console. So I'll go to user management and now I'll go to service principle. Now I already have two service principles and I'm going to use ease with data Azure SP for this. Okay. So I'll just click on this 
and then I'll go to credentials and secrets. And now I'm going to generate a secret for this particular service principle. I'm going to redact some part of my screen. So you'll not be able to see the secret, but you can follow the steps. Okay. Just click on generate secret and give a lifetime for your secret. I'm going to use one day for it. And I'm going to click on generate. Now it is important to store your secret and client ID for the next part. Okay. Now I'll quickly go back to the documentation for authentication and I'll scroll down. Okay. Now you can see two options. Above one is to configure for account console. Below one is to configure for workspace. And we are going to configure both of them. What I'll do is I'll just copy the first one. And if you remember in our notepad, we already opened Databricks configuration file, right? So I'll open the notepad and now I'll paste it here at the bottom. Okay. So what we are doing is we are trying to configure a profile in our Databricks configuration file. Okay. Now I need to provide the name for the profile. So what I'll do is I'll just type SP account. Okay, because we are configuring it for the account console. The next thing that we need to provide is account console URL, account ID, and the client ID of our service principle, and the secret that we just generated a few seconds back. Right. Again, I'll quickly go back and copy this for the workspace as well. So I'll copy this as well. I'll come back and I'll paste it here. And I'll rename this profile as SP Workspace. Okay. And now we need to provide the host URL for workspace. So I'll just copy the host URL for our workspace again. And I'll paste it here. And now we need to again provide the client ID and the client secret that we generated a few seconds back. So what I'll do is I'll quickly go back and copy the account console and account ID and the client secret. Okay. Now I have already pasted it for client ID and client secret. Now for host for account URL, you just need to copy accounts.azuredatabricks.net. Okay, that is the host for account console. So I'll just paste it here. And for account ID, we need to copy the account ID from the account console. So you can go ahead and click on the right hand corner profile button. And then you can copy the account ID from here. Okay. And then you can paste back the account ID. Great. Now that we are good with this profiles, I'll quickly save this configuration file and I'll close this. Awesome. Our profiles are saved. Now, what I'll do is I'll quickly open my command prompt and I'll clear the screen. And now we will run some Databricks CLI for account console. Now, in order to do that, I'll just type Databricks and account and I'll type help. Okay. And now you can see I can go ahead and use a lot of things in account. Let's go ahead and see all of the meta stores that are available. Okay. So I'll just clear my screen. I'll again type that same command, but this time I'll type meta stores and I'll type list. Okay. And I need to pass the profile that I have configured for account. So I'll just type SP account and I'll hit enter. Awesome. It gives me the list of all of the meta stores that are configured. So you can see all of the meta stores, right? Let's go ahead and run one more command in the account console. So let's go ahead and see all of the groups that are available in our account console. Okay. So I'll just type data bricks and I'll type accounts and I'll type help for it. Okay. Now we can see a lot of options here. Let's see where is groups. So we can find the groups here, right? So we can run group command as well. So I'll just clear it. I'll again type group, then I'll type list, and then I'll provide the profile name, which is SP. Okay, and I'll hit enter. Awesome. Now it gives me all of the groups that are configured in our account console. So now you know how you can configure your service principle with M2M authentication in order to play around with account console as well. Let's go ahead and see if our service principle is also working with our workspace for the profile that we configured, right? So let me just clear it out and I'll just type Databricks catalogs list and I'll use the profile SP workspace. Okay. And I'll hit enter. Awesome. Now it also gives me all of the catalogs that are configured in our Databricks. So now you know how you can configure different type of authentication methods like U2M, M2M with your service principle, with your user account. And we are going to use this CLI in order to work with bundles, which stands for Databricks Asset Bundles in our next video. And also this M2M authentication with our Azure DevOps pipeline. So before our next video, let me show you the CLI command for bundle. So just type Databricks bundle and then type help. Okay, and this is the command that can help you to get started with Databricks asset bundles. And we are going to see Databricks asset bundles in our next video. I hope you have learned a lot about Databricks CLI today. Just go ahead and play around with a lot of commands that are available in Databricks CLI. 
I have not demonstrated all of the commands that are available, but given you enough information to get started. So in our next video, we are going to work with Databricks Asset Bundles. We are going to configure our first Databricks Asset Bundle, and we are going to move around Databricks assets like notebooks, pipelines, and job from one environment to another using dApps. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, and keep sharing.